Hello and welcome to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most underproduced, poorly produced Amiga channel. This is your channel operator, Q, as always. Thank you for watching. As you know, on this channel, I cover hardware and software, and more software than hardware. I know I've been hitting you guys with a lot of hardware stuff lately, but I soldier on. And today I wanted to bring you another one of my uh, lightweight videos. I haven't done one of these in a while. Um, this is gonna be actually part of uh, the Lightwave Basic series of videos I've made. Those are some of my earliest videos on this channel. They go back almost a year now. And those early videos, yes, are very, very rough, living up to my channel's mantra of the most poorly produced, underproduced. They are uh, recorded um, well, if you just go back and watch my Lightwave Basic videos, you, you, you'll see what I'm talking about. The point of my Lightwave Basic videos is to uh, show people who have never used the software how to use it. And that's what we are going to do, and this is not the right program, this is Layout. This is the program I normally show you. So how the program Lightwave works is it has a layout program, which is this one, and this is where you do your animation and render your pretty pictures. And then you kind of think of this as like the sound stage, like where you make your movies. And then, you know, movies have a place where they make props. And so we're gonna go make our props in the prop department. And that is the uh, modeler program, which you see I use so often that it's still stashed away up in here. Yes, I don't do a lot of modeling. This is not going to be an advanced modeling video. This is going to be exactly what my title says it is, a Lightwave basic video, which is to show you this program's most basic operations to just get you a start, just a fundamental start and how to like do something so that you can you know, explore yourself and figure it out. So you see this quad view here and what you've got is the, uh, the top and the, the front and the left. And that's, it, that's, that's, what it's, that's exactly what it's doing. So if we go up here and we click the box tool with the left mouse button, I will try and remember to tell you guys what keys I'm pressing because I know you can't see that. But yeah, the left mouse button is selects things. So you see left up here, clicking, clicking, clicking. So we're gonna go back to the objects tab, which is your items, or these are your props, and click box. And then what you're gonna do is in any of these views here, if this, any of these, uh, we call this the quad view, by the way, you'll hear me refer to this as the quad view. And up in here, we call this the perspective view. This is kind of like your little TV set for whatever it is you're creating. So when you create stuff down here, it'll show up in your little TV set. So you're gonna left click, hold the mouse button in any of these quad views, and draw out a box. See, the box tool, right? Now you can let go, and then go into one, and this is the important thing, go into one of the other views, it doesn't really matter which one, and then just kinda loosely click on it again with the left mouse button and hold, and drag up. And if you drag up, you're making a box. You can go down, but if you go down, your box will be inside out. So go up, <laughs> and then let go, and instead of turning off the box tool, you're going to hit enter. Now, when you hit enter, I don't know if you saw that, but these little tiny dots just showed up in the corner here. Those dots are letting you know that a box has indeed been created. So now you can turn off the box tool. So now we have this box, but where's the, where's the box in the TV set? Well, you need to go up here to display and then over here to options. And here it says preview type. Remember I used that term quad view before? See how it says up here orientation quad? That's, that's the, the view mode we're in. And you can reconfigure that view with all these different options, but I'm gonna stick the, to the defaults to keep it simple. And as you can see here, we're on a, um, we're mode promoting this to 800 by 600 Picasso 4, 800 by 600 8 bit. Modeling program here, the modeler, this lets you actually pick the screen mode it can open up on. You do not need to mode promote this. The other program I showed you at the beginning of this video, Lightwave Layout, that requires mode promotion if you want to open it up on a, on a Picasso screen. It doesn't have this built-in tool. So here, access under display, you can see I've chosen this. Now, getting back to our little TV set preview in the corner, that's preview type. So you're gonna go up here, click here, and we're gonna say solid. Look at that. There's our little TV render of our box up here. Left click alt on the, um, so um, yeah, I don't have my Amiga keyboard. <laughs> okay, so you've got this view up here, this little TV view now that's rendering your uh, box up here. So you're gonna hold down left alt and then left click hold mouse button in this view and you can do this, you can rotate it. And see if you kind of rotate it like this, it helps visualize the perspective of it. You can kind of see the thickness and the, 
See how that's kind of like, uh, kind of fools your eyes and then making it look like it's three dimensional, even though it's not. And then if you let go, it just leaves it alone. And you can click here and just keep rotating it. So I like this solid mode because it, it gives it that kind of like 3D wireframe rendered look. And if we go back to options, you can set it to things like wire. And now it looks through the box. And if you left click alt, left click mouse button and hold and rotate around, you can see that there you go. You get the more complete visualization. But this can get a little weird sometimes. Like you'll look at this and it looks kind of weird to your eyes. So I like the whole um, wire. And then front face is very similar to solid where it basically doesn't render anything that's behind it. This comes more into play when you start chewing chunks or taking bites out of this box, which we're about, we're going to do next. So let's go to solid. Here's the basic tools. Again, we, I showed you object, but you see, you've got ball and what do you think it does? Yep. Using the same methodologies, it creates a ball. Again, hit enter, turn it off. Now you've got your ball. You don't see it, right? Because it's inside our box. So if you went back to display, options, wire, now you can see it in the box. And then if you go to options, front face, you can see it in the box, but you're only seeing the front side facing of these polygons. So like you know, I said solid and wire and, and front face are slightly different. This is why this allows you to see things inside, but hides the things you can't see for those things. It's a little, a little confusing, but that's, that's how that works. So I just stick to solid and we'll go ahead and undo our little ball that we added. So we've got disc cone. These are, these are just basically, we call these primitives or like basic shapes, basic prop shapes you can work from, but the, uh, the coveted box, is a great way to start for almost anything. One of the things I'm gonna do next is press uh, F1, function one, and that will center the box in modeler for you on this, see this, this Y and this X here, this like cross forming in the middle of the grid here. That's, this is, this is called your origin, your center. And this is like where everything lives in the center of the world and now my box is out here. And this number down here in the corner, it says, because you see all these little boxes, right? See all these little like Tron grid boxes here? This 500 millimeters is letting you know that every single one of these boxes here is 500 millimeters across. So if you do Shift H, Shift H, and you see how the tool changed, my little icon changed, then you left click, with all tools it's left click generally, and then hold, you can scale the box up and down, right? So there we go. So let's let's take it down to like, um, so we've got so each of those squares is 500 millimeters. Let's take it down to like two by two of those squares, let go. And then if you want, you can press F1 again and it'll center up the box. Now the box is, is gotten smaller, yes, but it's, it's smaller in our view now. So it's kind of harder to see it. If you press the key A, that auto fits the display to uh, this what's available in your modeling program here. We just have a box so that's what it's going to auto fit to and you'll notice that the grid changed the relative scale So it's letting you know because you size the box down and now we've zoomed in to look at it Each of these squares in the background is now 200 millimeters So 200 millimeters 400 millimeters and so on. So that's how this whole Relationship of scale with these grids in the background. So even though these grids these these dark gray grids in the background never change size that this, this is how you know what scale you're actually in down here in the corner. And obviously you wanna try and stick to real world scale as much as possible when you're making stuff where practical. Obviously, if you're making the five mile long Babylon 5 station, you don't wanna make it five miles long. It'll break the program and it'll make animating along it very difficult. You have to kind of get into relative scales, kind of like modeling. You have model airplanes, for example, 118 scale, you know, 132 scale and so on. So you have to kind of use that logic. But now that we have this box and I've given you the most basic uh, overview of the, the simple tools that are available to make shapes, the next tab up here is called modify. And this is where you can do some of the things I've, I've already just shown like stretch, stretch was shift H. Okay, that was this tool that we used to do that. I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. Shift H was size. That's the one that made us change the size up and down. Stretch is just H. So shift H is size. You can see how it's selected it here. H is stretch and you see how it's selected it there. Now you can do like squishy squish shapes and then drag. 
lets you click on these little dots, which are called points. Okay, so you see how it sits down here, points, polygons, and volumes. Drag lets you click on the points and kind of move them around, which can be useful for stuff. I'm gonna undo that. And if you go down here right now, this, 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 this is a good segue, point polygon volume. What this is telling the program is that my little tool here, my little my, my mouse cursor can only pick or affect points. So these little dots. If I want to actually try and grab the big square here, I need to go to polygon, which is what the square is made out of. And now I can click and pick the polygon. Okay, so if you click, let me let me clear that again. If you click once and you grab the line, that's gonna pick whatever it think it thinks it, it touched. So in this case, you can see that it touched um, a bunch because we have a bunch highlighted here. One, two, three, it looks like. Now, if you hold down the shift key, you can keep picking more of the polygons. And eventually you can get them all if you just kind of keep clicking around. To deselect everything, it's really weird how this works, but the shortcut is to just left click somewhere over here where there's nothing to, to, to click. So left click and that deselects everything. I know it's bizarre. Another way to grab all these polygons is to, this is one of the rare times you'll use right click. You're gonna right click and hold and then kind of like just draw out a circle to pick what you want. There you go, see? And then again, we go over here, left click to deselect it. So let's say I just wanna grab this top polygon, the one up here. You can right click and hold and drag and just kind of do this and now you've got it. Then you can use move because you're in this polygon mode. You can click move, which is T by the way on the keyboard, T. And then you can guess what? Yeah, you can move it up and down and around and have all kinds of fun with it. We'll click on undo on that. So that's kind of a basic operation of picking points versus picking polygons. See, if we go back to points, it, it gets rid of the polygon. Now, if I try to pick that polygon, watch what happens. Nothing, I can't pick it, but I can sure pick the point. And to keep in mind, what's this say in the right corner here? It says top. So when I click this corner of the box, what's it gonna do? It's gonna pick everything below it too. So it, it grabbed the point down there. So you're like, well, I only want that point. There's a couple of ways you could do that. You could say like, okay, let me do that right click lasso thing. I just want that point. Well, that's still gonna grab that one down there. So what do I do to get rid of this? Well, in much the same way as you pick things, once something is picked and then you let go of the mouse buttons, anything you do after that is gonna unpick. So if I left click on this point down here because I've let go of the mouse buttons, it's gonna unpick it. And I can unpick this one too. So you go up here, you lasso it, or you pick it with the left and they're all picked, right? Because I've let go of the mouse buttons, and I'm not using the shift key, if I pick something, it's gonna get depicked. If you wanna add something, hold down the shift key and now it'll bring it back. You can go back and start picking anything with left click or you can do the right click, hold, lasso and get it. And then if you want to uh, deselect things individually, again, just start left clicking on them or you can right click, lasso on them. Or again, to clear everything, you can just click over, left click over here where it's empty. So that's kind of, uh, those, are, those are some powerful, simple, simple tools I've just showed you. It's, it's the basic operation of the program, left click, right click, how to pick things, how to deselect things. Just getting those basics down in your memory will save you a ton of hassle in, in manipulating these shapes and polygons. Because obviously there's a lot more tools and fancy things this thing can do, but that's the most basic uh, operation. You know, the, you've got the, mod the basic modifier tools, learning what left click and right click do, knowing the difference between point and polygon mode. These are very important for you to progress in this. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, you see all these little dots over here, these little beveled buttons? This looks like something out of like a video game. Like, what is this? You can like left click on all of them and what is going on with all this? And why does one of them have a dot? Well, that one with the dot has this box in it. Okay. What this is, is a management system so that you can have lots of these quad views. See how you've got the quad view with this box in it? Well, you can have a bunch of these quad views up here and you can come one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, <gasps> eleven, twenty, okay, and so on. So it just keeps going, keeps going, and keeps going. And now there's two of them selected. What's going on with that, huh? So these are basically called layers. These are different canvases for you to paint on, if that helps you understand it. 
You got the base canvas that's set up your easel here that you're making stuff on. But then you can slide another one into the studio and start working on stuff here. And on this one, you can be like a ball. So we left click and we draw, drag out our ball shape, like, hey, happy ball. Click enter, and now we turn the ball off. So now we've got this canvas here, and we have this canvas here. The shortcut to these canvases, by the way, to a point, is the number key. So one, two, brings us to canvas two, three, four, five, and then eventually you're gonna run out of number keys, so you gotta start clicking up here. But um, that's like one and two is like a quick way to kind of see what's going on. Now, another neat little thing here is that even though I'm on canvas two, layer two, I can look behind me and see what's on the next, what's on the canvas that's behind me, okay? Or I can look at what's on the canvas in front of me. So let's go to three, let's get really crazy. Let's go to three and let's create a cone. So now we're creating a cone on three, right? Does that look like a cone? It looks just like a cone to me, right? Click enter, hey, look at that, a cone. So now we've got on canvas one, layer one, we've got a box, on two, we've got a ball, and on three, we've got our cone. So let's go to two. These little, the reason you have this bottom row down here, this is called background, background layer. It's kind of like looking, it's like a cheat, a cheat, like looking behind you or in front of you at the next canvas that's, that's in front or behind you. So we're in canvas two, and I wanna see what's over on canvas one. I wanna get an idea of what's going on in that room. So if you left click on the dot below canvas one, while we're in canvas two, you can get a sneak peek of what's going on back there. See how just, you can see the box we have back there? And then you can look in the other room to the other direction. There you go. You can see what's going on in that one. Well, what if you want to see what's going on in both those rooms at the same time? While holding the shift key, good old shift, because remember shift most of the time is going to add to a selection. You can click the other canvas room and now you can see both. Yay, look at that. And then to get back, you can just click two to turn off those uh, sneak peeks. So why would you want to do that? Well, maybe you're you're making something and you need to see what you've done before in one of those other canvases and that is like a reference, sure. But one of the other fun tools is called Boolean. This is where I mentioned it earlier about taking a bite out of something. So yeah, we're gonna take a bite out of this box. And how you do that is you need to have something to take a bite out of it. So you've got your box and we, got, we know we've got our little ball back here. So what we're gonna do is take a look at the uh, can, we're going to do our little trick where we look in the room behind us. So we're going to look back there. And now we're going to press T to move the ball. And we're going to move it out in a way a little bit so that none of these points is like touching the lines of the box. We, re, we really don't want to have any of these points touching the lines of the box. That can, that can cause problems with the Boolean tool. Remember, this is 35-year-old software. And the math back then, the program, programming back then, as awesome as it is, and already seeing what you were able to do 35 years ago with a tool like this is pretty amazing. But it's not perfect, so you gotta be careful. You can help it out a little bit by just making sure none of those points are really touching any of the lines, where possible. It's You don't always have to do it, but it helps. So we've kinda got that positioned using the T. And again, to deactivate a tool, you just select the tool again, so I can hit T again. Or no, I guess I can't, sorry. Well, turn move off by clicking move. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself in newer versions of Lightwave. I, I guess that feature was added later. Um, so now we've got the ball positioned. So now what you need to do is go back to canvas one, layer one, because this is the box we want to take a bite out of. This is the thing we want to take a chunk out of. And then how does it know to take a chunk out of it? Well, one of the things you do is you need to go look at the room that has the thing that you want to take the bite, you know, have it take the bite. So we're going to look at the ball in the background. This, so we've got the foreground layer of the box selected, and then we have the background layer of the ball hiding out back there. So now we can click Shift B, and that brings up the Boolean tool. And it has all these fun options. You can basically merge the ball in the box with this tool and make it one item. You can do an intersect, you can do a subtract and an add. Um, I'm gonna show you the most exciting one first, subtract, so that's the bite. So with that selected, we'll click OK. And look at that, you got a bite out of your box. And again, holding down left alt and then left hold and click the mouse button in our TV view up here, our perspective view, you can get a better idea of what it looks like. Now, if you wanna get rid of the background room, remember just click one to go back to our main room. And now you can kind of get a better idea of, of what that looks like. So isn't that fun? You got, you got, got yourself a little bite out of your box. So let's click undo. And let's put that ball in the background again. Let's do the shift B again. What does add do? 
it does exactly what you think. It's basically the same as if you were to go to room two, click copy, come back to room one and click paste. That's what it does. But it also create, I'm gonna see if I can show this to you. I'm gonna click polygon. I'm gonna click polygons on the ball so I can select some of the ball. Now, if you wanna select this ball, you can of course go through and go click, click, click. Oh my gosh, this is taking forever. Oh, I just picked some of the box. I don't wanna do that. What's, what, do, what do I do? Do I panic? Do I go over here and click here to deselect everything? No. Remember, let go of all the tools and you're in polygon mode. So the next polygon you click now is gonna what? It's gonna deselect. So click, you can deselect it. And as you can see, you see this line here that looks like it's part of the box? Well, it is. So actually, you know what? I've selected too much of the box and we need to go back and just deselect everything and let's start again. But see, I'm showing you this process. So if, when you encounter it, you don't panic. So I, w I wanna pick this ball because I wanna show you what just happened when we did the Boolean Add tool. So let's pick some of the polygons here that are away from the box so I don't accidentally pick any of the box polygons. And now using the right bracket key on your keyboard, this will automatically select all of the polygons or if you were in point mode and doing the same thing, automatically select all the points or polygons of the item you have that are physically connected to each other. It's a pretty cool, fun way to, to instantly do that. Now you notice when I did that, it picked some of the box down here. So if I click the minus key, now this is the minus key, you know, and plus and minus, the minus key, this does not delete those polygons. It simply hides them, okay? They're just, we're hiding them for now. And if you go to uh, display, that's the same as pressing the visibility hide selection right there. That's all we've done. But what this reveals is the Boolean add tool not only just copy pasted that ball onto our box, but it also kind of did the Boolean. It kind of did the bite and it left these polygons behind of, of these shapes. So what you can do with the polygon tool is you can come in here and you can actually kind of pick that. And again, holding the shift key, we can grab the ones on the side here. And then once we've picked the ones we want, we can let go of everything and then pick over here and unpick the ones we don't want. So now we have this little bite. That's something we can do with. I mean, we could make that a different color from the rest of the box. This is one way to have um, surfaces that you, uh, in surfaces as I've described in my other videos are the, are the materials, the way we paint or color our items. You could have this be brown and the box be blue or whatever. This is another, just, you know, experiment. This, this is, I'm trying to show you another tool on how you can create stuff and what it does. So that's what Boolean Add did is, is what I'm trying to say. We can say unhide over here, by the way, and bring everything back. So let's click undo because the last major thing we did, we remember all the stuff I just did was me selecting stuff and hiding stuff. It wasn't actually editing the mesh. It wasn't me going in here and really changing anything. That's why the undo still worked. So if we go, and I, and I know I'm, I'm going through this fast. Remember, of course, you can pause the video, back it up, and go, what, is, what, did, what did he just say? What is he doing? So please do that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the ball in the background again. Shift B for the Boolean. So that was add. So what does Union do then if that's what add does? Union does pretty much the same thing, but it does two things at once. It copies and pastes the ball back onto the box, but it also takes a bite out of the box. So we've got that bite out of the box. It's there for you to use if you want it. Undo, shift boolean, let's intersect do. Click, intersect takes the shape of the ball where it intersected the box, and instead of taking a bite, it, it I guess, vomits the rest of the box away and holds on to its bite. So that's what you get there. So now you've got this nice little wedge, and again, we can just show what it's done with the little wedge. And I have, that's how you can get your cool little wedge shape. Okay, so, what I've showed you now is the basic layer system of LightWave and, and why it exists, and that's one of the major reasons it exists. Boolean operations require it. You always have to have your target item is the thing that you want to affect, and then the cookie cutter item needs to be in the background. So any of these could be a cookie cutter, and you've got to put those in the background. And it doesn't just have to be this first layer. I can go over here and put the box in the background here, and if I did a Boolean, subtract, what's it gonna do? to this cone and the box is gonna chop off the bottom of this Christmas tree here, right? So that's 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 that tool, it's a really fun tool, the Boolean tool. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and press F1 again to get this box centered in our in our little world, our access world, our little visual here. Press A to reframe it. And then I'm going to go over to uh, zoom and I'm going to do a zoom out. And you can just click that and see how it zooms out and zooms in. Remember when I said to click A to get it framed up? Well, that's the whole fit all, fit selected um, business that's going on. That's if under display, all these tools I've been talking about with hotkeys like a that's fit all fit selected so fit selected basically says let's let uh, let's do uh let's do zoom out let's say we're way out here right and we're in polygon mode so we right click drag and we select that polygon if you do fit selected it's gonna just frame up that selected item instead of the whole box and then if you do fit all it'll go back and fit everything and fit all is a fit selected is shift a so shift a a, shift A, A. Learning these shortcuts is critical because it'll allow you to work a lot faster. Uh, and again, we're gonna deselect that by doing that. Let me show you another fun tool and then I'm gonna wrap up this video. Um, there's a lot of tools in Modeler, obviously. This is just first of many videos about Modeler I'm going to make. This is giving you the most basic understanding of how, again, to create basic object shapes, how to select and pick things and manipulate things and how to do basic fun stuff with layers up here. The next fun little tool, again, we're gonna be in polygon mode because again, most of the editing you're gonna do is gonna be in polygon mode. We're gonna pick some polygons. I'm gonna pick this top one here, and then I'm gonna left click, now I've, I've, let me do that again. I'm gonna left click and pick, and then I'm, I've noticed because my, these little, these little lines, I explain these lines in other videos, lightweight basic videos, but these are letting you know that, that these polygons are facing a direction, that they're actually facing outward. And that's why you can see them over here in your little TV view. So, but I only, I only want the top one. So I'm just gonna left click here, left click here and then get rid of it. Alternatively, if I just wanted the top one, I could have just right click dragged and grabbed the top one and then been okay. So next I'm gonna do a fun little tool called B, which is bevel. So you click B and this comes up and it says inset shift, inner, outer, custom, all kinds of stuff. For now, I'm gonna keep it super simple. We are just going to shift this polygon up 100 millimeters. Keep in mind the scale. If you look in the lower left corner, the scale means every single one of these little gray boxes is 100 millimeters. This is gonna take this polygon, it's gonna move it up 100 millimeters, and then it's gonna inset it or scale it down 100 millimeters. So what's that mean? What's that gonna look like when I click OK? That's what it's gonna do. We can do A to frame everything again and you've created a nice little house, <laughs> the simplest version of a house. So that's what that does. That's the fun bevel tool. It has lots of options, of course, you can experiment with, you can click it to outer, and then you're gonna get this kind of like, I don't know, what would you call this? A treetop kind of bevel effect, which can be fun. Again, B for bevel. And then, yeah, you can do custom, you can pick different surfaces and get, get really fancy. You've got this plus or minus value, which you can kind of randomize the bevel, which is fun. Um, and then of course, let's say you've done a bevel, um, click. Now you wanna do another one. You can keep the same polygon selected and you can bevel it again. Sorry, you can B for bevel. You can bevel it again. And this time let's make the, um, let's make the shift not as drastic. Let's only do 50 millimeters. Oops, sorry, 50 millimeters, enter. And then let's only shift it. I'm sorry, let's shift it only 50 millimeters and let's inset it way small, like 15 millimeters. I should actually read what I'm, entering into the fields, right? Click OK, and, dunk, and now we've kind of given it a, uh, now it looks like a, uh, what is that, a Pizza Hut. Shift A, just to select that area so you can get a better look at it. And I'm left click, Alt, left click mouse in the TV view to rotate around again, remember? So you can kind of visualize it. Click A to frame it all up. That's kind of cool. So let's deselect. Uh, one other tool I, want to, I should cover briefly is how do, how do you move around these quad views? Like I'm, I'm picking polygons and I'm doing shift A and A and that's fun, but I need to move around in here. How do I, how do, I do that? Well, left click Alt on the keyboard and then left click the mouse button on the view. Don't, don't pick polygons because they're points. Don't get near those. Try and do it where you're not near those. And then if you hold down, you can then move this around. So this helps you navigate around that's left alt and left click mouse button. That helps you kind of move around, move around, clicky, 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 clicky. Um, so that, 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 that can be fun. <laughs> um, the, um, what's the term, what am I trying to say? 
And then, yeah, you go back to display and you can zoom out. So you can zoom out and then kind of left click and left alt and move around to see what's going on in your scene. This this will matter more, of course, as you get more complicated shapes. Like if, I, if I'm building my little uh, Pizza Hut house here and I, so now I want the polygon that's over here, but I don't want all this stuff. So I left click and get rid of it all. And I go back to B or bevel tool. And this time I tell it, um, I don't want to have any inset. Um, I don't want to have any, any inset. I think I broke the bevel tool. Let's pick the bevel tool again. There we go. Okay. I don't want any inset, but I do want to shift it. But I want to shift it a whole bunch. So it's telling me that one of these squares is 500 millimeters. So two of these squares should be a meter. So one, M, enter, go. Clink. Yep. Now I've got a nice big extension on the side. Isn't that fun? Hit T for move, and I can uh, move it up, but that would be dumb, so let's, let's, let's undo that. But I'm just, getting again, giving you an idea of how this stuff works. I can click on the size tool and size it up. And you'll notice when I use the size tool, it matters where the origin of the mouse pointer is when you left click and size. So if you want to size evenly, you kind of left click in the middle and see how it sizes it evenly. If you're up over here somewhere and you left click and size, it kind of brings it down. So the origin center of where the mouse pointer is is very important for sizing. You can size any view, as you can see. And that's how you can you know make the shapes. And then of course you can uh, rotate, which is the Y key. So if you click in the lower corner here, you can kind of do like a swinging door type rotate. Or if you do in the middle, it's gonna kind of do like a pinwheel type rotate. So that's, that's fine. That's how you can make shapes. And again, left click over here. Um, Yep, there you go, look at that. That's the stuff. Deselect the tool by turning it off, and then you can deselect the polygons. And then just one last thing, because my name is Q, my nickname is Q. If you hit Q, that's how you assign a, a surface to it. This is, again, in other videos I've talked about this. The name is always default. We will call this um, not Pizza Hut, and we will make it red, and we'll click Apply, and now it'll have that red color to it called Not Pizza Hut, and then we can go to Object, save as and we will save it not into the excelsior folder we will call this uh pizza hut dot lwo i always like to add the extensions in amiga operating system you don't need to do that but just for your own data organization you should so lightwave object lwo click enter now that's saved now we can take that to our lightwave layout program let's go to that and go to object, load object, and Pizza Hut. Make sure our camera is not set to something stupid. See, it was set to something stupid. Uh, record, we're gonna use ham eight. Hey, look at that. Go to our camera and our camera view and move our camera around a little there, a little rotate to the left. Ooh, look at that, that's nice. And then press F9 to render. Look at that, we've got our Not Pizza Hut red box thing we made. Yay! Isn't that exciting? So that is the most basic fundamentals of Modeler. And I know I'm ending the video on layout again, my favorite program, but I hope that helps. Again, you can go back and rewatch sections of the sex, sex, sexy sections, sections of the video where I may have talked too fast. Um, don't forget there's also the YouTube's automatic uh, closed captioning of videos, which can be helpful sometimes if you're not understanding a word I said, that can help. So thanks for watching, have fun modeling, and uh, yes, I will try and make more of these videos. Take care.